Hey, this is Ruben Lerner. I have another question slash Python problem from a reader of my Better Developers list. This is from Dan, and Dan says he'd like to know how to make database connections with Postgres, PostgreSQL, and retrieve data from tables. So, first of all, relational databases are amazing. I know they're not so much in vogue anymore. Everyone's talking about no SQL. I've been using relational databases for a long time, and I can tell you they continue to be amazing. They're not the only solution to data storage problems, but they're not a bad storage solution, uh, and, and they work really well. And they're typically done in client-server systems. So you have, for example, PostgreSQL has a server, and you can have a client. And the client is typically going to be a program, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but it can also be a command line program. And indeed, if I want to connect to my Postgres server, actually, let me just take a step back. So there are many different relational databases out there. You have Oracle, you have uh, you know, SQL Server from uh, Microsoft. In fact, many Microsoft SQL Server users somehow think that SQL is like just a Microsoft thing. It's not. SQL is the language we use to talk to our relational databases. So it's nice that they sort of took over the word SQL and SQL Server, but you also have open source databases. You have MySQL, you have MariaDB, which is like a fork of MySQL from the founders. It's a whole story in and of itself. And the database I've been using for over 20 years is PostgreSQL. Postgres is wonderful and amazing in many ways. And what you'll have then is the Postgres server. You have the Postgres client, which can be a program or can be a command line program, as we'll see in a moment. And they talk using SQL, meaning I'm going to send queries to the database using SQL. And so what I have here is I can say PSQL. And PSQL, without saying anything more, just connects to uh, the same database as my username. So my username is Reuven. My database is Reuven. And what do you know? If I do a backslash C here, we'll see. You're connected to database Reuven as user Reuven thus inflating my ego even more. And if I say backslash DT, and you don't need to worry about these details so much, we'll see that there is a table here called people. If I say select star from people, we will get here me and uh, my three children and our birth dates. You can see how old I am and how young my children are, I guess, in you know, some way or another. And so basically, um, we have here a table with four columns. Columns are ID, and first name, and last name, and birthday. And I can do all sorts of queries. I can say select star from people you know, where, uh, I don't know, uh, ID is greater than two. And sure enough, then we'll only get those rows. That's the sort of thing we can do in our query. Or I can say here, select star from people where birth date uh, is greater than, and here we'll say 2000, January 1st. And here will show all the people who were born after January 1st, 2000. This is what you can do with SQL. And SQL is like incredibly deep and clever. Um, some people don't like it. They're wrong. Anyway, let's say I want to use uh, this from within Python because I want to work with Python for my thing. So I'm going to just take this away. Actually, I'll just shrink it off. All right. So now what am I going to do? Well, I can't just like write here. I'm just going to pull up some notes for myself here from the side. All right. So first of all, I can't just talk to Postgres directly from Python. I need to go through a library that knows how to talk Postgres ease. Um, and so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the database using this class, using this object. And that object will take my SQL and send it over the network and then retrieve things and turn it back into Python objects. I'm not talking about something like uh, SQL Alchemy. SQL Alchemy works at the level of Python objects. It's what we call an ORM, an object relational mapper. So you work in the world of objects, it translates those object calls into SQL for you. So you don't have to write SQL yourself, sends it off to the database, gets it back, and then turns it back into Python objects. The good news with an object relational ma mapper is that you can stay in the world of Python objects at a very high level of abstraction. The bad news in my experience is that sometimes it doesn't do such a good job, doesn't understand your objects. Truth be told, SQL Alchemy is pretty stable and works very well, and many, many people use it. But we're going to stick to the sort of low level, how can I work with the database here in SQL? And this means that our code is going to be a little weird, because we're going to have Python code. And in that Python code, we're going to have strings. And the strings are going to contain SQL queries. And then we'll get things back, and we'll see in a bit how we can work with those. So I'm going to need a library that knows how to work with Postgres. The one that I'm going to use is import psychopg2. I'm going to import that. And this is one of the best known and oldest Postgres connection uh, libraries. There are some other ones out there, including some forks of PsychoPG. I've been pretty happy with this one. Uh, if you want in the comments, you can you know, leave messages about what else you can and should use. So now that I've imported this module, now I can actually connect to my database. And I'm going to say here, um, I'm going to have a connection. I need a connection object. I'm going to say connection equals psychopg.connect. 
And now here I need to have a connection string. And this connection string is where you're going to say what user, what database, what host, what all that other stuff. Truth be told, if I say nothing here, it will just use those same defaults that we saw before, but you don't want to do that. So I'm going to say here, db name equals Ruben, and let's say the user equals Ruben, and the host equals localhost. And I can say like the port equals all sorts of things. Notice I don't have quotes before and after the names here. I actually made a mistake with that in an earlier version of this video, and sometimes when I'm giving people help, I always forget. This whole string is just passed to Postgres, and it knows what to do with it, and it knows not to use quotes and this and that. So once I do that, if I say, hey, what's my con object? I have a connection object and I'm connected to, and you can see here the string is just passed along and we're doing great. Now you might think, okay, great. Now I have a connection to the database. Now I can send my queries, but you cannot do that yet. We have to actually use a cursor object. Now this is not a specific thing to Psycho PG2. This is what DBAPI, DBAPI is the Python uh, standard for connecting to relational databases and working with them. Um, and so PsychoPG here is just doing the same thing as all the other DB API uh, um, uh, compliant libraries are doing. So before I can do anything with my connection, I'm not going to need to create, create a cursor object for actually working with queries. So I'm going to say here, cursor equals con, and then cursor. What do you know? I create a cursor object. And I say, hey, what's this cur? It's a cursor object. What's, it? what's, what's the type? It's a Pico PG extensions cursor. That doesn't need to interest us so much. This is how we are actually going to do our queries. Each time we want to send a query, we're going to send it via the cursor. Each time we want to get results for that query, we're going to get the results from the cursor. So I can say here, cur.execute. And now I can put in any query I want. So I can say here, for example, select star from people. Now you'll notice that I'm using capitalization here. Um, the capitalization is 100% ignored on the database level. So why am I doing it this way? Because I follow the conventions that I learned from this fantastic book called SQL for Smarties. I love that name and I can't remember the name of the author right now, but you should look it up. Great book if you're interested in learning about it's a series of books, actually. If you're learning about how to deal with relational databases, he suggests capitalizing things this way, and I follow that ever since. So I execute my query, boom, it's gone. And now if I like ask my cursor, it's still there, right? It's still there. It hasn't said anything, done anything, but now I can get responses. Now I can say cur.fetch all. And look what I get back. I get back a list of tuples. Now if you've ever wondered about lists versus tuples in Python, this is a good way to understand the difference between them. A tuple by Python convention, right? Technically speaking, technically speaking, tuples are immutable. They cannot be changed and lists are mutable. They can be changed, but their usage in Python is very different. The usage for tuples is for sequences in which the types are different, in which I want to have a collection of different items, in which I have a record. Hey, what do you know? I have database records here. Great. A list is for a sequence of items of the same type. So what I did was I got back my list of tuples here, and what I really should have done is gone through them one by one, iterated over them, and done something with them. Well, if I do cur.fetchall again, I get nothing. That's because I've iterated to the end of it. I executed my query, I got the results, we're done. So if I want to execute that again, I can execute here. And now instead of just doing cur fetch all, I'm going to say here for one record in cur.fetch all. And now I've got the record. Now what does the record contain? It contains one, two, three, four items, four columns. Where did you get those columns from? Well, I can say here it's the ID. Actually, let's say you know, record ID so we don't interfere with the built-in ID. And we'll say our first name and last name. And we'll say here, you know, birth date equals one record. And then I can print out, because I'm in Python 3, I can use, you know, cool F strings. I can say here, uh, let's do this. We'll say here, record ID. And then we'll say here, first name and last name. Born on birth date. And what do you know? We get this, like, cool, oh, I didn't close the square brackets, but that's, like, a, a minor point. I'll just do this again so you don't have to suffer from the unesthetic way that I did this. Oh, so much better now. All right, and so you can see all these different things. Now, what if I want to put in something additional in the query? I can do that, or I can say here, once again, you know, where, and we'll say here, uh, you know, birth date, I think I call it birth date, is greater than, here we've got to be a little careful with our quotes, 2000, January 1st. 
All right, and sure enough, now if I copy this and I do it again, now we only get three records back. Right now, could I have done the filtering at the Python level? Absolutely, I could have. Is that a good idea? Almost certainly not. It's almost always faster and better to do this sort of thing at the level of the database. Now, this means that you have to learn SQL. Yes, that is the downside of working in this way. The upside is that SQL, as I said before, is extremely powerful and useful. And if you know how to work with it and get the relationships going between your tables, you can do incredibly amazing stuff and then just get back uh, the values here and work with them. One last thing I want to show you here is that if I now say birthday, right, I'm going to get the, the last element or the, you know, so the last of the birthday here. Notice it is an actual datetime.date object. So I can print it, I can calculate relative things, where right? I can say here, import uh, uh, date time. And I can say here, date time dot date, right? And it'll give, oh, sorry, I have to say, actually, can I say now here? I might be able to. Nah, okay, it doesn't allow me to do that. Fine, fine. Uh, but I should be able, if I do an import time, now I'm really experimenting at your expense. So if I do a time dot time minus birth date. Oh, okay, it doesn't like it. Fine, okay. So now I've messed up this video completely. But but the idea is that at least in theory you can get you can do daytime dot date. Oh here you know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do this. So I'm gonna say daytime date time dot date of it's now 2019. Believe it or not, 131. That gives me today. So if I say that minus birth date, now we'll see. Ah, oh, see, I knew I would be able to get it. I get a time delta object. And so whereas a date time object is a fixed point in time at this moment. A daytime time delta object gives you a measure of between two things, what we sometimes call an interval. In fact, in the world of Postgres, we would call an interval. And you can see then that uh, my son, as of this, is 4,840 days old, uh, which is you know, a silly way to measure it. But because we have this time delta, then we can play with it all sorts of other ways and use it and measure it and so forth. All right, so Dan's question was, how can we interface with a Postgres database in this way? I hope this gives you a good basic introduction. The PsychoPG uh, documentation is not amazing, but it's not bad, and it should get you where you're going if you need. Um, thanks very much to Dan for asking this question. Um, if you have questions about Python, you can always send them to me at reuven at learner.co.il. And my Better Developers list, which comes out every Monday, free, read by, at this point, more than 11,000 people around the world every week, hopefully gives you lots of insights about Python each and every week in your mailbox. You can sign up at learner.co.il slash newsletter. Thanks a lot, and I hope to see you again soon.